in an autosomal dominant disease, a single defect in any one of those genes will lead to the disorder. So the best way to describe this would be to draw out the Punnett square and make the cross between this individual who contains the gene and this individual who doesn't. So when we cross this, we're going to get the following results. So because autosomal dominance means only one gene has to be uh, affected or defected in order to pass on the, the disease, we see that this person and this person will both get the disease. Now, when we do the math on that, we have two who do and we have two who don't, right? So these people won't be affected. So that means that we have a 50% chance of passing on an autosomal dominant disease. Now, if we're looking at a pedigree, it's going to be really simple to recognize. Now, let's say we take this affected person and cross them with this affected person and we get four children. We get one, two, three, four. And this person is affected and this person is affected. So we know that it doesn't matter if they're male or female, they can equally be affected with a 50% chance of inheriting the disease. So the way this, this will look is if we cross the people who don't have the disease and we multiply people who do have the disease, what you're going to see throughout is a fairly well-balanced inheritance of the disease. So we know that there's a 50% chance when we mate these two people that this generation will get the disease. So if we do the math here, we have one child, two children, three children, four children, and this one's affected, this one's affected, these two aren't, and that matches our 50%. So in general, you're going to see that with a pedigree of an autosomal dominant disease, it's going to be fairly equally distributed 50% uh, to all the children. Okay, so that's how you recognize the autosomal dominant pedigree. It's fairly straightforward. There's no um, underlying tricks to it. It's very easy to recognize.